More. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. For three days the week before last, I was honoured to attend the Australian Defence Force Parachuting School in my electorate of Gilmore as part of the ADF Parliamentary Exchange. Defence plays a major role in my area on the New South Wales south coast, both at Nowra and Jervis Bay, at HMAS Albatross and HMAS Creswell. But as a local growing up in the area, less is known about the ADF Parachuting School just outside HMAS Albatross at Nowra. When the terrific opportunity came up to do the parliamentary exchange, I decided to do something about that and take a look behind the scenes at what really happens at the ADF Parachuting School. Now, Nowra is definitely known as a Navy town, and for good reason, and that's something we're proud of. But I was pleasantly surprised to learn that the Australian Army's Special Operations Command trains the best of the best Special Operations Defence members how to parachute maintain their jump proficiency, become a parachuting instructor, learn rigging, ground support, air dispatch and all the many elements in parachuting. It's where you'll find commandos, the SAS and many other special operations defence members learning to parachute, maintain proficiency and upgrade their parachuting skills. Around 84 personnel are involved with the ADF Parachuting School, from serving defence members, reservists, Australian public service employees and even the CASA Plains crew there. Four courses were running at the Parachuting School when I was there, involving well over 100 defence members. Everything from the basic parachuting course to parachuting instructors courses, ground support and more. There was drill after drill on mats how to fall and land a static line jump rows and rows of parachute harnesses hanging from the high ceiling where parachuters practiced even with the heaviest packs, drills on land in a makeshift plane on how to prepare, enter and exit the plane to parachute, simulators to simulate every parachuting situation that can go wrong, the towers to practice. On the second day, I went up in the CASA plane with defence members, with some having travelled from far on the day to jump to keep up their proficiency. Others were parachuting to become an instructor or to gain new proficiency. I was down for a tandem jump on the third morning with a very experienced tandem parachuter. And I must say that tandem jump proficiency is a highly valuable and much needed skill. And I've got to say, I have never been the, the thrill seeking type of person, not one for fast rides at the show and certainly not one for heights. But the training that these Special Operations Defence members were doing was first rate. I thought I should just put away my fears and do it. I had multiple safety briefs. I had made sure I hadn't eaten breakfast just in case. Uh, we climbed to 13,000 feet, which is about four kilometres high above HMAS Albatross. I listened to every instruction. I felt like my life depended on it, and it did. But oddly, I actually felt quite calm, which surprised even myself. When the back of the plane opened, all I could see were the clouds. Yes, we were hopping out here. The freefall was sensational through the clouds. There was even another freefall parachuter with a camera that somehow, I'm not sure how, came up in front of me and waved. Then the parachute went up and whoa, up we went. <laughs> now, I do have a small grievance here. We started spinning rapidly, round and round and round and down. I was trying to remain calm, knowing that my tandem parachuter was the best of the best and had everything in hand, which he absolutely did. I'm not sure how he did it, but somehow he got rid of the main parachute. It went sailing into the air somewhere and he pulled the reserve parachute out and we landed with that. When we landed, I was told to hop up and go and fight the enemy, which is a very fair point because that's the reality for our Special Operations Defence members. Parachuting is a means to an end or perhaps just the start for military reasons, for humanitarian reasons, parachuting in at night, parachuting in from extremely high heights and freezing temperatures, parachuting into the water, parachuting in supplies and infrastructure. Now, Deputy Speaker, I did have a slight problem with the landing where I accidentally put my left foot down at the last moment, which is not what you do. It turned out later that I had fractured my fibula, fibula just above my ankle, but again, nothing compared to what defence members go through. Now, I was told with regards to the canopy malfunction that that was not meant to happen. 
to which I said I thought it was just part of the ride. At that stage, I probably did not grasp the severity of the situation. But the truth is, Deputy Speaker, the ADF Parachuting School and our Special Operations Defence members practice every scenario just in case something goes wrong. I believe I have had the full experience as part of my ADF parliamentary exchange, but people will be relieved, no doubt, that once I'm fully recovered, I have been invited back to do another ADF parachuting school tandem jump into the water at Jervis Bay. Now, what could possibly go wrong there? Deputy Speaker, I want to sincerely thank every defence member and the entire team at the ADF Parachuting School. What I learnt in three days was just the best. I have the absolute admiration for our ADF parachuters and the ADF Parachuting School team and the many insights they taught me. I never imagined I would learn so much or jump out of a perfectly good plane. I surprised myself. While the Special Operations members' identities are protected for very good reason, I will forever be grateful to them. The truth is they train to protect us all. We should never forget that. Deputy Speaker, I encourage local people and people from right across Australia to consider a defence career. You just never know to what heights and where it will take you.